Hello, scholars, and welcome back to Making Meaning. I'm Miss Keller. Today, we're going to continue wondering with nonfiction. Like our last text, we will be exploring insects. However, we're going to hone in, that means we're going to focus in on one type of insect today. Today, we are going to be learning about butterflies. We will wonder with the first part of this text today and the next part of the text in the next lesson. This book, Butterflies, is by Teresa Wimmer, and it is published by Creative Paperbacks. We know that we have lots of butterflies in our parks here in Seattle, so it's very fun to get to ask questions and learn more about them. Let's see what we might be learning about today. We go to the table of contents. A table of contents is a text feature that will tell us what we might be learning about that topic. So we can see that on page six, it's gonna be coat of colors, page 10, a big world, page 12, from caterpillar to butterfly. So when I look at those three, I start to think to myself, what do we think that this book is gonna teach us about butterflies? Stop and think. When you're ready, you could say, this book might teach me about Feel free to share in your home language while you're sharing with your partner. Wonderful scholars. I heard some people say they might be learning about the different colors of the butterflies or how they grow from, a, from the life cycle, the caterpillar all the way to the butterfly. Those are a couple things the table of contents clues us in that we might be learning about today. We're going to keep reading and remember we're going to practice our wondering strategy so that means we're going to use our sentence stems I wonder, try that, I wonder, great. You might be specific with your question and use the word what blank, try that with me, what or why or when, or who, or where, or how. And I want you to think, what do you want to learn about butterflies? What do you wonder about butterflies? When you're ready, using your sentence stems, go ahead and share with your partner what you're wondering about butterflies. We had a few kids call in and they were wondering the following. I wonder what different butterflies look like. Someone else wondered, and they used that where stem, where do butterflies live? Someone else wondered, I wonder, do butterflies like to be together or alone? We're gonna use those questions and we're gonna look for answers while we read our text today. And we're also gonna come up with some more questions that we have about butterflies while we read. The first part of the text, the code of colors, I want you to use your imagination. Remember, we're always using multiple strategies for reading at one time. I'm not going to show you the pictures of this part because I want you to picture in your mind how the author describes what the butterflies look like and what words help you. Look outside in the spring or summer. You might see a butterfly flying around. Butterflies are pretty insects. They have two wings on each side of their body. Butterfly wings come in many colors. Some butterflies have blue, red, or yellow wings. Others have green or brown wings. Some butterflies' wings look shiny. That part again, butterfly wings come in many colors. 
Some butterflies have blue, red, or yellow wings. Others have green or brown wings. Some butterflies' wings look shiny. Butterflies have two eyes. Their eyes help them watch out for enemies such as birds, spiders, and other insects. Butterflies do not have a nose. Instead, they have two antenna on the top of their head. Remember, we talked about antenna in our last couple lessons. That's what um, they have on the top of their head to communicate or to smell. Instead, they have two antenna on the top of their head. Butterflies use their antenna to smell and to find food. Their antenna help them feel things too. When butterflies fly, their antenna help them feel the wind. Okay. What do your mental images look like? What words in the text helped you? When you are ready, you may turn to your partner. Share, I pictured the butterflies looked like blank because we read blank. I pictured the butterflies having shiny blue wings, two of them coming on either side of their body with their black antenna as the wind is blowing, but it's still sunny outside, and so their wings are gleaming. There's that vocabulary word, did you hear it? Their wings are gleaming in the sunlight. That means that they're shining in the sunlight. There's that great image of their two eyes and their antenna coming out of their head. It's a nice close up on the butterfly body. A big world. Butterflies live in most places on earth. Some live in woods or fields. Others live on mountains. Some butterflies live in hot, place, dry places called deserts. Most butterflies fly alone during the day. When it rains, they take cover in trees, bushes, or tall weeds. At night, some butterflies gather in small groups. They sleep in the grass or under leaves. This caption says, resting butterflies hold their wings up. And another fact about butterflies, their wings are very thin. When butterflies get older, pieces of their wings break off. Most butterflies do not like cold weather. During the winter, some butterflies migrate to stay warm. Now, that word is in bold. That means it's important. Nonfiction books often have bold words, and they are usually explained in the words to know or the glossary on the back. And this one tells us about the word migrate. It says migrate means to move from one place to another, usually to find warmth. So we can go back and reread that, keeping in that in mind. During the winter, some butterflies migrate to stay warm. That means that they move to stay warm. Monarch butterflies fly to trees far away from their home. They find the same trees every year. This is a group of migrating monarch butterflies. Monarch butterflies are the large orange and black ones. We have them here in this, um, in this state in our parks. We're gonna practice our strategy and think about what did we learn about Butterfly habitats. I learned, go ahead and stop and think. And when you're ready, you may share with your partner. got a phone in and we heard someone say during the winter some butterflies migrate so they learned that butterflies move south to stay warm something else they learned about the butterfly habitats is that 
they live in most places on Earth. Wow. Scholars, I want you to think, there were some facts here that I already knew and some things that were new to me. What did this book say about butterflies that you had already knew? Stop and think. Go ahead and share with your partner what you already knew about butterflies before we read this book. Were you like me? Did you already know that butterflies have two wings on each side of their body? It says right here. They have two wings on each side of their body. Did you already know that they had antenna? It's important to think about what we already know because then we can also think about what is new that we're learning. I want you to think, what was some surprising information that you learned about butterflies? Stop and think. I learned. When you're ready, share your surprising information with your partner. I got that phone in. I heard someone say it was surprising that when butterflies get older, parts of their wings break off. Is that right there? And I learned something new today. I didn't know their antenna helped them feel the wind. Wow. Now that we've learned some new things, let's think about if anything we learned was explained from our wonders chart. like, where do butterflies live was definitely answered. If we go back in our text, this section, a big world, was all about the habitat or where the butterflies live. They live in most places on earth and they like it to be warm, so they migrate. This page it talked about them migrating. Some of them migrate to stay warm. That's right, looks like this one. Both of these were answered. The first part told, told us about what they look like, how they have two wings, this bottom one too. I wonder do butterflies like to be together or alone? That whole second part was talking about the habitat, but it also talked about how they are alone during the day. But at night, they like to rest in small groups, and that photograph is showing us that. Hmm. We've already learned so much about butterflies. But what else are you wondering? What do you want to learn in our next lesson about butterflies? Stop and think about what you wonder. I wonder, those green scented stems, I wonder. And when you're ready, go ahead and turn to your partner. We had another wondering come in. Two other wonderings are, I wonder what kinds of food butterflies eat. And someone else was wondering, how long do butterflies live? These are great questions that we're asking scholars. Some of them are gonna be answered in the text and some of them might not be. In our next lesson, we'll finish the text and we'll see if the rest of these answers are explained or not and some other ways that we could find out answers to our questions.
Now, scholars, it's your turn to practice your wondering on your own. In our last couple lessons, we have been reading nonfiction books. We're going to choose just right books that are nonfiction again. Some of the books that I've been reading are Raccoon, which was in my last lesson. I also have this book, great book about bats. And I like this book because it's about um, how bats survive and by living at night and being nocturnal. Well, that was very interesting. All right. Today, scholars, you're going to get another nonfiction book. I'm going to go back to my baby chipmunks book. We don't just read a book one time, especially when it's nonfiction and there's so much information in these texts. You have to go back several times in order to really get that information into your brain. So today, when we read, not only are we asking questions, but we're looking for answers, the things that we learned. What I did is put a marker on the page that I learned something that surprised me, something that was new information. It's important to notice what's new. What is this book teaching you? So on this section, it's called a chipmunk's body. And I'm going to go straight to the part that I read that taught me something new. When you're reading on your own, you'll read for about 20 minutes. And if you have a piece of paper or a marker like this or post-its, you can just mark the pages that you've learned new things in as you're reading. So this page, I finished reading it and marked it. Now I'm going to come back to it. I'm going to reread it to remind myself what it was that it was new information. This one said, this section is about backbones. Chipmunks are vertebrates. Vertebrates are animals with backbones. You can see the backbone diagram there. A backbone is a row of bones that runs down the middle of an animal's back. Chipmunk stripes. Chipmunks have five dark stripes on their bodies. How many light stripes can you count on this chipmunk? Well, scholars, the new information I learned was that they have stripes, dark, they have five dark stripes and only four white stripes on their back. So, after your 20 minutes is up, you go back and you reread that part, then you can write in your wondering journal, your reading journal. I wrote, my book is Baby Chipmunks. This book is about chipmunks, babies, how they grow and their habitat. Now, remember, I wrote about this a couple days ago in my journal as well, but as I've been reading more, I'm learning more, so I'm more sure about what this book is about now. I wonder, why chipmunks have stripes. Now that I read about it, I'm curious to learn more about that. But I did learn that chipmunks have five dark stripes and only four white stripes. Then I can use my wonder the next time I go back to that text and reread. All right, scholars, it's your turn. You need to go get your nonfiction books, and it can be one that you've already read. See what else is new information to you while you read today. And I'll see you for our next lesson when we get to finish the book Butterflies and see what else we learn about them.